Welcome, and welcome to Blue Bonnet Crafters Turtle Room. My name is Gabi, and I would like to show you a complete set of making a hexagon, weave a hexagon, using the continuous strand method on our little turtle room. First, let's take a look at our tools. Here is our turtle loom. This is the original size turtle loom. To give you an idea on how big this is, this is the tablet is five inches by seven inches top big. And um, let's take a look at the tools that we will need. First, we have a crochet hook. Crochet hook is a size F or G. And this goes together with a weaving needle. The weaving needle is about seven inches long. Instead of those two tools, you can also use a locker hook. Um, I have used the locker hook successfully when I'm traveling to just have one tool instead of two. Um, it's also an excellent choice when you weave fuzzy yarns like mohair or blue clay. Um, but for today I would like to, you to, to show to you the crochet and weaving needle method. So goodbye locker hook for now. Uh, I have here a comb to pack our weaving. And of course some scissors. All you need the scissors for is to cut the yarn and Here's the yarn. We're using worsted weight yarn. And uh, this is uh, Yarn B Soft Secret. You can also use Caron Simply Soft or Red Heart or uh, different types of wool yarn, uh, wool blends. Um, I have used a lot Bukla yarn. Uh, I've used even uh, raffia. Raffia is a little bit harder to weave, but it makes beautiful coasters. Um, but let's get started right away. Um, let's take a quick look at our loom. Uh, you will see that the loom, at this point we probably want to zoom in a little bit, please. Thank you. Um, you can see that the loom has pins in different colors. There's a white pin at the top and a white pin at the bottom. These will be the pins that where we start weaving. And then there are four black pins on the other corners. And these black pins will be indicators for us to switch weaving methods. We're using a continuous strand weaving method and let's just right begin um, to make it easier to sew the hexagons together with very little waste. I'm starting with two lengths of yarn before I make a slip knot and the slip knot goes on the top white nail to get started. All right, here we go. Now, if you are familiar with diagonal weaving on pin, on uh, square pin looms, then you already know half of, the, uh, half of the game. From the top white nail, we go to the bottom white nail, and we go around that bottom white nail from the left to the right, and going to the first brown nail to the right of the white top nail and go around that. And you see this makes our first loop and we're ready to weave. Weaving starts with under over. Take the thread and pull it through. Put the thread over the first brown nail to the left of the white top. Then with your crochet hook, pull the thread down to the first brown nail to the left of the bottom white nail. Go over to the first brown nail to the right 
on the bottom, go around that, and bring the thread back to the next available brown nail at the top and go around it. Do you see how you now have two loops? Here's the inner loop, here's the outer loop, and it's time for weaving again. Under, over, under, over. Pull the thread through, next available brown nail at the top, pull down, next available brown nail at the bottom, go around the next available brown nail at the bottom right, bring it back to the top. Next loop is ready. Under, over, under, over, under, over, pull through, pull down, go over, bring it up, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, over the next nail, bring it down, bring it over to the right around the next nail, bring it up, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, bring it over, pull it down, bring it up, next row, under, over, under, over, under, over, and so forth. Pull it through, and you continue to do this until you get to the black nails. Remember that we said the black nails indicate that we need to stop, so we will do that once we get there. But I want to show you one more thing before then. Do you see how the pull through threads arch, arch a little bit? And this is something that weavers do to get the right tension in their wefts. So now we take the fork and or the comb and pack our weaving. I start packing after five or six rounds. Um, before then it's really not necessary and uh, after that I'll do it every round. Um, it's not absolutely necessary, but it helps to make the fabric nice and even, so it's absolutely worthwhile doing it. So you see this goes very quickly now, and you can see how the fabric is forming. Once you don't have enough space to start here in the middle, go between the nails at any place that you find convenient. Under, over and particularly for the last few rows until you reach the full width. Um, this is quite helpful. And it really doesn't matter whether you are in the middle or a little bit farther up or a little bit farther down. Just find your a place that's most convenient for you to get between those nails. Pack it under over between the nails on the side. And here we go. And here is, no, not yet, one more round. But you see how we're getting closer to the black nails. And here we are. There's a black nail. Go around that black nail. It's a little bit more tricky to get around that black nail at the top right. That's the first black nail. We weave that row, the next row. And here we go over the black nail at the top left, pull it down, black nail at the top, at the bottom left, and the thread comes out at the black nail at the bottom right. Let's pack it and take a quick look. All right, what you see now is that we have the top triangle is woven, the bottom triangle is woven, but we don't have any more nails going out here at this point. So what that means is we say goodbye to our crochet hook and we say hello to our weaving needle because at this point we will change weaving methods to fill in the rest of our hexagon.
To do so, first we need some thread, and it's rather convenient here where your thread comes out, counterclockwise go and loop the yarn around five times, one, two, three, four, five, and bring it up to the top and snip it off. This will give you the perfect length to weave in the rest of the hexagon and still have enough thread to sew the hexagons together with little ways afterwards. Weave your needle and here it goes. To get started, I turn around my loom. Let's make a little bit of space here. We're done with the yarn because we have all the yarn that we need now on the needle. And now it's very simple weaving like darning or regular weaving over, under, over, under all the time. The thread goes around the black nail right here. And then you go between the black nail and the first brown nail on the side and go under, over, under, over, all the way to the other side. There we go. And you come out between, on the right side, between the black nail and the first brown nail on the side. I put my finger here on the left because it makes it easier to pull through the thread. It will not run away. Don't pull too hard. Remember, keep that little arch and pack it in. Out of convenience, I turn around the loop, go around the next nail, and now I go over, under, over, under. If you are not sure if you should do under, over, or over, under, just look at the threads. If it sticks up, push it down. If it's at the bottom, pull it up. Coming it through and packing it and turning it around. Now, you might have observed that I'm left-handed. Um, the beauty about this method is that there's really not much that needs to be changed, whether you are left-handed or right-handed. Um, what I recommend is that you, um, when you try it out, you just move the loom the way it's convenient for you. For example, if I were right-handed, I could now just weave from the right. Since I'm left-handed, I'm turning around the loom and go over, under, over, under to the other side. And you see how we're starting to fill in the center part of our hexagon. Now, uh, there are several traditional hexagon looms available. One very well-known one is the lily hexagon loom. It's much bigger than what we have here with the turtle loom. Um, the difference is that you have that the nails on the lily loom are spaced evenly. You probably have noticed that we have more nails at the top and the bottom than we have on the sides. When I started reading about hexagons, uh, I learned that there are a lot of mathematical properties that are very unique to hexagons. And so to totally understand them, um, it's actually not, it, it actually takes some effort to fully understand what's going on in your hexagon. Um, based on what I learned, and a lot through trial and error, I think I found a nail spacing that works best. It's not the perfectly mathematical nail spacing that you would calculate if you were a mathematician. Um, but at the same time, um, it is spaced so that if you weave using these two methods, you get a very even plain weave. I'm coming to the center 
of the middle section, and I just want to comment, add a comment here. Um, sometimes when the worsted yarn is a little bit thinner, at this point, I actually weave the center nail twice, which means I add two more rows here to make the fabric a little bit denser. Um, this gives you even more flexibility with what yarns to use. Um, with this yarn and many, most or most other yarns, I should say, uh, you can just continue to weave what you have been weaving, which is uh, just keep on going around each nail once and do your under, over, under, over to get across. So there we go. And again, watch that you keep those arches and pack them in loosely so that your hexagon doesn't pull in on the sides. And you can already see how we are closing in that space. And at this point, um, I'm looking forward to getting close to the last row. And I will show you something like that. If I don't chat as much as I'm doing for this video, I can make one of these hexagons in the original size in about 10 minutes. Um, I'm very confident that with very little practice, anybody can make about four to six uh, hexagons in, in just an hour, which is uh, a nice accomplishment if you think about it. Uh, look at some of the patterns that I'm making available. Uh, so you can make a nice uh, table runner um, in, in just a few hours. All right, you are getting closer to the end and I will show you with the next row something special, which is also a good indicator when you are almost done. Um, first of all, the nails will tell you if they don't have, I can just show you here, each nail, um, it's a little bit hard to see, each nail here has a thread around it, except for one, that means we're close to the last row. Here's a special observation that's a little bit spooky if you don't know about it. The second to last row, when you weave it, the weaving looks very much the same as the triangle at the top. So they share the same shed. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. The needle is where you come from the top up from the bottom up and here you have the triangle the last thread from the triangle is in the same shed don't get spooked we will fix that magically with the last row so here we go here comes the last row make sure that you keep those two threads separate to get the last row in between last nail last last row under over all the way through. And you see how magically the last row separates the previous two web threads and brings the plain weave to perfection. If you wish, you can even out with your comb a little bit the plain weave and we're done weaving. Now how do we get this thing off the loom? Go back to your thread that you started with and take off and open the slip knot. And then you can go with the needle just down one side of the hexagon and take off all the loops from the, the nails just on one side and I will show you why this won't make sense in just a few seconds. Uh, it might be a little bit tedious. If they are coming off too hard, that means you have been weaving a little bit too tight. So with the next hexagon, you might want to go a little bit easier. 
um, that this is what it should look like. And now once you're done with one side, you can just with your fingers pull off all the other sides. All right. There's nothing else you need to do to secure your weaving. Um, that's, that's, that's it. So here's your woven hexagon. It looks a little bit quirky like this in the beginning. Don't worry about it. Take opposite corners and give it a wiggle and a tug. Move on and give it a wiggle and a tug. You will notice that some corners are a little bit more stretchy than others, and that's normal. That's the nature of, of uh, hexa the, the plain weave on hexagons. You have sides that are a little bit diagonal and sides that are straight. And here is your new completed hexagon. So um, that's pretty much it. If you want, this is your first coaster. Put a cup of coffee on it or a pretty glass and you are done. Or you can go crazy and uh, make some nice table runners or uh, home decoration or even clothing. Uh, there's pretty much no end to it. So this is it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you again. Goodbye.